who is a movie star who is not ashamed of being a movie star and who has sort of taken on that mantle with appreciation. A lot of people think, you know, being a movie star is easy. You just, you know, you fly around in private jets and limousines and get wined and dined. But the bottom line is you get to be a movie star by incredibly hard work and discipline. With box office clout came the power to get projects made. Arnold's next film, Total Recall, was one such project. Ronald Chusset, the co-writer, producer of The Smash Alien, had tried for nine years to bring Total Recall to the screen. It seemed doomed, sunk in the bankruptcy of a company owned by Arnold's old friend, Dino De Laurentiis. So Arnold called me. He said, Ronnie, you ready to make Total Recall? I was just totally stunned. I said, well, Arnold, yeah, I'm ready to make it, but you know it's part of Dino's bankruptcy now. It's tied up in Dino's bankruptcy. He said, I know I untied it. <laughs> With a couple of phone calls, dealmaker Arnold freed up the rights to the long-delayed movie. He just effortlessly got it made, as well as getting Paul Verhoeven to direct it, so I had both. I didn't lift a finger. So he did, Arnold did the whole thing for me, just like he does in the movies. It was, like, totally awesome. Based on a story by science fiction legend Philip K. Dick, whose other works inspired Blade Runner and Minority Report, Total Recall finds Arnold the victim of a virtual vacation to Mars gone awry. Catch! Get ready for a surprise! The structure he loved. So don't change the structure. But he said, you gotta remember, I am a personality. If you start giving me complicated dialogue that I can't pronounce correctly, I don't want the audience to say, here comes that big Austrian. So when with a self-evaluation of himself is perfect. Most people's egos get out of control. They want to do Hamlet, whatever, you know. Glory. <laughs> Co-starring a then-unknown Sharon Stone, Total Recall used over-the-top violence, clever plot twists, and Arnold's one-liners to conjure up over $260 million in worldwide ticket sales. After all, we're married. Consider that a divorce. We were talking about this, and he said, you know, I got to be careful because I'm, well, I kill people ruthlessly, but there are always people who deserve it. But he said, I've got to remain the good guy, but still, I've got to be the gentle giant, and that's what people want to see. Schwarzenegger followed up with the 1990 hit comedy Kindergarten Cop, another collaboration with Ivan Reitman. Co-starring Penelope Ann Miller, the film showed Arnold as that gentle giant who loves kids. So suddenly a movie like Kindergarten Cop, where he's surrounded by a classroom full of five-year-olds, became a great opportunity for comedy, where he uses some of the energy of being a father and the kind of experiences that he had in his real life, and then sort of just cocked a little bit in a humorous way. You really sense that Arnold is always having fun no matter what he is doing. And there's something incredibly appealing about it. You really have a feeling he loves his life. I mean, he loves his wife, he loves his children. He's a good dad. I mean, what I know, it's not like I live with him, you know? But what I see, I mean, we go to Sun Valley, he's always with the kids, you know? He, he's, you know, very protective. There's a natural progression with Arnold. And he's someone who has always been giving back to the public and to especially to kids. Arnold had long supported his mother-in-law, Eunice Shriver's Special Olympics for the mentally handicapped. He became their national weightlifting coach, and the Kennedy clan quickly saw the depth of character their son-in-law possessed. Some people will do things just for how it makes them look or possibly for their image, and he's not like that at all. He really puts a lot of time and a lot of effort into helping people and his different causes, and it's just who he is. Even future presidents took note. Arnold stumped for George Bush in 1988, in his inimitable way, of course. We don't have to talk about the Democratic candidates, right? No. They all look like a bunch of girly men, huh? After he was elected, President Bush returned the favor. Schwarzenegger was named chairman of the President's Council on Physical Fitness. He traveled to all 50 states at his own expense, preaching the gospel of the great American workout. Are we ready for some exercises? 
movies. For all the bravado that that man has, he's got a huge sense of bravado and a huge sense of confidence. And that same huge sense that you see is the same amount of compassion he has for people, for families, for children. It all comes from a very organic and honest place with Arnold. Arnold also became the chairman of the Los Angeles Inner City Games. What makes me happy today is to be able to teach kids how to say hasta la vista, baby, to drugs, gangs, and violence, and to say yes to education, yes to sports, yes to hope, and yes to life. I once said to Arnold, you know, it's, it's a full-time job just being you because there's so many demands in his time, not just from the movies, but he's involved in so many charities and political causes. By 1991, the time was right, if not overdue, for a sequel to The Terminator. At Arnold's insistence, he returned as a kinder and gentler cyborg in Terminator 2, Judgment Day. The Terminator character is interesting to play because you can play him one time as a villain, then you can play him as the savior and as the good guy. At the time of its release, it was the most expensive movie ever produced. With over $500 million in box office sales, the returns were equally impressive, making Terminator 2 Judgment Day one of the 20 highest grossing films of all time. Arnold's a showman. He loves to entertain. He loves to amaze the world. His ego is so in check that he said, look, I, I've never seen myself as a superb actor, and I never, don't care to be one. I want to do just what I'm doing. I want to make great movies. I want audiences to love the movies, and I hope they'll like me in them. Arno! 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 Arnold's American dream had become a Technicolor blockbuster. He had hit movies and lucrative real estate deals, including a $10 million development in Venice, complete with an Austrian restaurant called Schatzi. And he had a high-profile joint venture with fellow action heroes Sylvester Stallone and Bruce Willis in the Hollywood-themed restaurants Planet Hollywood. With his popularity at an all-time high, the last thing Arnold expected was a major bump in the road. In 1993, Schwarzenegger was paid an unprecedented $15 million to star in The Last Action Hero. The film was a huge disappointment to both audiences and critics. Arnold was mortal, after all. He's a very confident guy. I think he sees life beyond uh, just acting. At the same time, he's very competitive. He wants to do his best. He wants to win. And uh, when you don't win, it hurts. I don't care what heights you achieve. In this, I don't care what heights you achieve. What is inevitable is that there's a slide back. And if you put all your apples in that basket, if, you know, if that's your life, and that slide happens, which it will, those are the people that wind up hurting themselves. Box office flops were part of the game, but now Arnold had to prove he had staying power. By 1994, Arnold Schwarzenegger's films had grossed nearly $2 billion at the box office. But when The Last Action Hero failed to live up to expectations, it was the first time Arnold experienced what most actors take for granted, the highs and lows of the movie game. I was surprised how much it hurt him. I thought he was inured to it. And to me, I, I liked that. He said, you know, he said, it's, I'm not used to it. He said, it's a bad feeling. He said, to make a movie that nobody likes. He said, money hits as you had. He said, I don't like that to happen. Remarkably, Arnold took personal responsibility for the failure of the film and vowed to do better next time. In a business known for inflated egos and outrageous demands from its superstars, Arnold was a breath of fresh air. It makes you embarrassed almost to say that you're an actor when you hear some of the things that people demand. It's, I mean, they serve less purpose to the community than a garbage collector and they take themselves seriously. So Arnold is on the good side of that bracket. For his next project, Arnold brought back an old and trusted ally, his Terminator and T2 director, James Cameron. True Lies featured Arnold as a suave super spy, whose wife, Jamie Lee Curtis, thinks he's a mild-mannered salesman. Blending comedy and incredible action sequences, True Lies was one of the biggest films of 1994. Arnold was back in the type of character he knew audiences liked best. He knows his range. And, you know, if that's what makes him popular, why, you know, why mess with it? I think he knows what he can do well, and that's what's made him so famous and, and so good at what he does.